Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Hello, it's Tuesday, uh, December 20th, 2011. It's nice Almost to see Christmas. you. Almost Christmas. Almost Christmas. And do you know what tonight is? Dun, dun. Tonight is brought to you by the number two. <laughs> the letter. The number two. No. Tonight, it is episode number 222. Whoa. You can't make this stuff up, folks. It can't just make happens. It up. Just keep doing it. You know, if you're starting a podcast, just keep doing it for 222 weeks. Eventually, this will happen. Here we are. Mm-hmm. Here's to another 333. Welcome to this episode number 222. It kind of reminds me of like an 80s sitcom. For those of you who remember the Call 80s. It, yeah. 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 What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> Nothing. I was just saying that it's convenient that you remember the 80s. Just convenient. I was three. <laughs> in the 80s, in all of the 80s? No, I just, you know, that's just, that's just it. <laughs> uh, hey, thanks, Dennis Kelly. says, it's been an awesome 222 episodes. Uh, Dennis Kelly, of course, spent the last six months just sitting there nonstop watching every single episode. Not really. Could you imagine? 222 hours broadcasting but tonight we have some exciting stuff going on because we are going to be talking about actually taking our linux desktop and tiling it you remember the old windows 3.1 i mean going way back in the past how you used to be able to tile and cascade windows and it was a useful feature if you wanted to save real estate on your desktop and we're going to look at it from an ergonomic standpoint and be able to cut down on our desktop footprint by tiling our desktop all the applications that are on our Linux computer. So stick around. We're going to be talking about that. Also, Jot is going to be paying us a visit. Cool. Uh, which is very cool. He has some messages, uh, a message for our viewers. We've got a pogo plug to give away a little later on in the show. So well, now they're going to stick around for you sure. Know, you got to. Because now you, you have stick to. Around. And of course, we're <laughs> wishing everybody a very Merry Christmas. The question came in uh, last week. People were asking, is is this a green screen or a we blue screen? We are actually in the North Pole. We have relocated. It is. It's just, it's mm-hmm. like that. Let's see if I can actually disable the uh, the chroma key here for a second, just to kind of give you an idea of how things work around here. We're using Telestream Wirecast. And Wirecast, of course, is a fantastic application that allows us to um, broadcast our show. That's what it looks like to us. The reason that it's green screen, for the, for the viewer who was wondering, you know, what's the difference between green screen or blue screen, you, you can almost answer that question yourself because green screen is required, uh, is the recommended uh, color for chroma key for digital video. So when you see blue screen, that's old analog tape style video. Uh, some news studios will use that if they pre-record with, with like uh, tape, right? So green screen is for digital, which is what we're broadcasting with. Uh, our cameras are all digital. And uh, blue is for analog. has something to do with the optics of the cameras. It's, it's mm-hmm. different. So green actually works better than blue for digital and vice versa. Plus, so. green is a superior color. Well, you blue. saw it. I so. mean, it looks pretty green in here. It does. It actually pretty brightens green. up the space, I think. I think so. Mm-hmm. Check out Wirecast. Uh, we broadcast live. Uh, it's very cool to be able to do live chroma keying uh, in this quality. And, of course, Wirecast is available as a free download uh, for the trial version. You can get it at cat5.tv slash Wirecast. Of course, it's a commercial application for Windows and Mac, uh, but it is fantastic. Uh, we'll let you get the free trial. Give it a try with your cameras. See what you think if you'd like to uh, give it a try. Cool. Hip to be green, Dennis Kelly says. <laughs> It's not easy being green. That was pretty mm, last time. Well, I, it's everyone, not easy it, being it doesn't, green. Doesn't get better. That's no better than that. I can't even. <laughs> I, I haven't done Kermit in oh, ten years. You tried. That's I all tried. That matters. At least it didn't come out like some ethnic kind of sounding thing. You know, could have. That would have been bad. Would have been really bad. Yeah. 
Okay, well, live.cat5.tv we launched uh, last week, which is a very cool feature of our website. If you're having trouble getting onto our website during a live show, unfortunately it does happen because you can imagine thousands upon thousands of billions of people hitting the server at the same time. Unfortunately, our web host kind of keeps track of what kind of CPU usage we're using. When it spikes, hmm. they cut us off. So it just it, that's where you get those momentary things. So live.cat5.tv should get around that for you. It's a, uh, it's a way to get uh, around our main website, which is a little heavier weight, and be able to watch the show directly through that. It's got uh, backstage pass as well as the chat room. So check it out, live.cat5.tv. And, of course, our mobile site, mobile.cat5.tv, if you're using a device. Uh, Becca is actually uh, taking care of the kids tonight. And she's watching on her iPad, oh, which is cool. cool. Very cool. And that's all doable uh, using mobile.cat5.tv. So, how you been? Hmm. Well, I've been super, super busy. Yeah? yeah. Work stuff? Or? Yeah, well, both work and, you know, just Christmas in general. So, mm. you know, everything melding together makes for a really, really How's busy Christmas. Is it uh, um, You know, I actually didn't have to do a, a lot of shopping. Mm. Yeah, mainly so just for, you know, just for Brad. Was, yeah, well, yeah. you know, I don't usually buy a lot of gifts. Usually I just, you know, show up and my presence, my presence is a present. You know, yeah. that's good, right? That's, yeah, that was a play on words. <laughs> hey, look at Krista's here. And that is my gift to you. Uh, I'm kidding. But I did actually, um, while we're chatting about buying presents, I did actually happen to see something and it made me think of you oh really and i had to get it it's a pickle wasn't it it's uh <laughs> <laughs> last week no. i gave i gave rachel a pickle and she it's poor it rachel just, yeah poor rachel why does she pickle. she still comes too so yeah, it's ridiculous <laughs> But it's not a pickle, so I okay. ruined it, but... Uh, um, well, hey, cheers. Thank you. So you must open it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like you like you mean it, a little okay. saving the wrapping. Uh, no, no, I'm not. That's my <laughs> mother-in-law. It's so cute, but yet so ridiculous every Christmas. Oh, so it says... I know your love geek. for... Star Wars, oh, yeah. and even though I couldn't Star- find oh. anything Star Wars, I got you this Star Trek oh, that's so paraphernalia. Nice. <laughs> We're ordering pizza tonight. Check this out. And I hope you don't already have one. This is thinkgeek.com <laughs> merch. Look at this. Oh. I've been told it actually works. I can't sing soprano. Goodness. Would you expect me to sing soprano? No. Hmm. Check it out. Thinkgeek.com. I, I, I know about them, right? Oh, well. This is. <laughs> for slicing your pizza. I hope it works. Otherwise, well, it's just for looks. I don't know. Give me your arm. Let's no, try. I'll pass. <laughs> Thanks, Krista. That is so cool. I'm going to, like, it's gonna, you're going to think I'm a total geek because it's well, on I display. Well, I got it for you because right. I knew you were a total yes. geek. This is like, oh, <laughs> it even says Think Geek. Mm-hmm. So I thought of Robbie. Sorry, Becca. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. <laughs> she has to put up with you now. I, I got I got you a couple of little things. I didn't wrap them as fancy, but, a, you know, a gift oh, card. Who I doesn't mean, love Timmy's? Who doesn't love Timmy's, right? And, Thank and you. you. I know that you've had these before, but I got you a couple of these. Oh, are, my goodness. These are amazing. These are amazing. They're just Mr. Beer. It's the biggest beer you've ever bought. I promise you that. <laughs> you've never bought a beer that's two liters before. Plus, there it you makes go. you feel like you've made it yourself. You literally feel like you've made it yourself. It's true. Mm-hmm. You open it. And then you put you the lid put on the it. tablet in. And then you wait. And then you wait for two weeks. And then it is delicious Pilsner with extra hops. I made sure you had extra hops. So enjoy that. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Cheers. Merry Christmas. I'll enjoy off air. In two weeks? <laughs> in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> we should put one on and, and then say like, oh, look, uh, you know, two weeks later or whatever, we'll... we'll have yeah, a, we'll, a real we'll enjoy <laughs> fun, you know, belated uh, Christmas kind of <laughs> New Year's episode. Hello, Becca. All right. Anybody joining us for the first time tonight? Nice to see you. Um, we do have some people that, uh, you know, have, have been watching for some time. I do see your greetings. Uh, Michael, Iowa. Nice to see you. Uh, lots of people saying hello in the chat room. Sammy says joining us again. Old guy, Jim. Jot, of course. Cool. All right. Well, uh, we are going to hit a sponsor ad, and we will be right back after this. Uh, stick around. Don't forget, we've got a pogo plug to give away tonight, and uh, I want you to uh, I want you to 
find out how you can win that. So stick a around. Nice little Christmas gift, <laughs> you know, from Cat5 TV. All right, stick around. We'll be right back. They're hitting the road or the dusty trails. Liquid Image Canada captures the action with a true point of view HD video camera built directly into a high quality MX goggle. It records every bit of the excitement exactly how you see it. If high octane isn't your thing, take a relaxing underwater adventure and capture it forever in high definition video with a high quality underwater camera mask from Liquid Image Canada. Perfect for the enthusiast snorkeler or the deep sea diver. Check out the entire line of camera masks for every sport. LiquidImageCanada.com Welcome back. This is Category 5 Technology TV and you'll find us online at www.category5.tv. Great. So maybe we should have a look at what kind of awesome stories we have for you tonight. Look, so coming up in the newsroom, Microsoft is going to start updating Internet Explorer without users' knowledge. Ooh, the sun could clean your clothes. Doesn't already? Hmm. LED lights are going to provide us with a brighter future. Ooh. <laughs> 200 kilograms of Russian Mars probe is expected to crash to Earth next month. Ooh, stick around. These stories are coming up later in the show. Brilliant. That's earth-shattering and entertaining. Yes. I don't know to be excited or scared. <laughs> it's ironic, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> these new LED lights, they're going to bring us a brighter future. I'm more no. excited about the sunlight cleaning my clothes. And the sunlight. Sorry, and guys. Yet, gotta go do sorry, laundry. By the on way, the we'll just wrap up the news <laughs> with the apocalypse taking place because of this Russian mm -hmm. satellite coming down. But know. maybe you can go out in the sun to clean your clothes. Oh, yeah. And You'd watch be and you the can, oh, Here it comes. It's dual purpose. My clothes are so clean. Try to get <laughs> that stain out. 200 kilograms of Russian <laughs> satellite. I wow. Think that's awesome. A. Jameson, 5579, is envisioning me cutting pizza going, Ooh, just like that. That's how it goes down, too. <laughs> look I'm what have, I have done. Yeah, look at what you've done. Again, pizza I'm Pizza so party sorry, at Category Becca. 5 this, th this Thursday. <laughs> Everybody be here. Okay, we've got some viewer photos that came in this week. Very cool stuff. Yay. Thank you so much for sending in your, your viewer photos. Uh, Brian Murray uh, paused episode number 220 just a couple of weeks ago. Just long enough to uh, have himself a uh, nice little drink of Guinness. Thanks, Primary. And uh, yeah, I, I'm expecting that, that, uh, that there's some of that in the mail. Perhaps some not. some Guinness? Yeah. <laughs> sure it's not shaken up, though. No. Our postal system would <laughs> yeah, never shake never. something. <laughs> no, no. They only crush things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Get your viewer questions in. You can email us live at category5.tv, or, of course, you can uh, join us in the chat room, category5.tv. Did I miss anybody who's brand new here tonight? Nice to see you. Uh, remember that all links that are mentioned on the show, so when I mention ThinkGeek and things like that, uh, they will be included in the show notes for episode number 222. Well... <laughs> You were going to say something. I wasn't. I know. I, okay. I, I know I was, but it was as the second I was about to say it, it was just fleeting. It was gone. Just like that. Mm -hmm. Just like that. It's like it school. Happens. Yeah. It'll come well, back later. That's okay. I'll let you... Uh, there's some questions and stuff, and we'll... Well, you want me to talk, to, about them? to talk about some questions? Sure. I can... And you, I'm sure there's some viewer testimonials and... It's got to be some questions. Oh, yeah. this PC. Well, yeah, we have a couple of viewer testimonials, too, don't we? <laughs> that PC. Do, do I do testimonials? She's clicking around, and she's, like, just clicking on I clicked on it, tabs. and it went away. It went away. If this was... She minimized it, A people. different computer product. We were talking about the mouse just there before already. the show. She's it's got this cord on she's it. What is that? She's complaining that it's corded, and I was like, oh, <laughs> it even has three buttons. That's kind of weird. That's totally weird. Yeah. Who needs three? Who needs three? I mean, you could just use key combinations with your mouse Why that works would you not? <laughs> <laughs> so, let's see if I can find uh, oh I'm on testimonials are we doing questions sure, or no testimonials, testimonials again. Okay. I love testimonials <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a show <laughs> yes alright well are you starting or am I starting I'm doing it oh am I reading am I oh, I can do it I want right to ahead. I want to do it. So this one <laughs> comes from Jonathan Garby. He says... Hey, Garby. Thanks so much for the web development series. 
uh, Robbie and Krista. Yeah. Uh, using the PHP skills that Robbie taught and W3 schools, I was able to build a personal website that is simple to keep updated. Keep up the great tutorials and work. Very nice. I've awesome. actually received quite a few comments about the, the web development series. Oh, it's good. It's cat5.tv slash webdev if you're interested. Uh, but uh, yeah, Garby's shown me a little bit as he goes and has learned mm -hmm. about PHP includes and setting things up in a, in oh, a much fantastic. easier to manage way. So well, that's great that cool. people are actually taking from it and, and yeah. using it. Yeah, yeah. and totally we appreciate uh, appreciate the comment as well, there, Garby. Thank you so much. Coolish. Well, we have another testimonial from Dominic Schroeder. Schroeder. Hey, Dominic. Hi, uh, says, hey, Cat5 team. Well, watching the latest episode of Cat5 TV, I noticed something very funny. Have a look at the picture. Okay. Do you notice the identity between Eric and the guy in the thumbnail? Eric. Pretty strange. Okay, there's Eric. This looks. This is YouTube. And, the and there's the guy <laughs> in the thumbnail. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Dominic. <sighs> How on earth, dude? Is this legit? Maybe it's did maybe this really. You know, this, this looks legit. YouTube did just update their website. Maybe now oh. they link videos by facial recognition. Do you think that's what? It is? Maybe. So I would like to think so. <laughs> so if you watch a video of Robbie, <laughs> YouTube is fantastic. It'll show you a hundred other videos of look, people that look Devin just like Townsend, Robbie or Darren Townsend <laughs> or whatever his name. Oh my goodness, that's hilarious though. So. YouTube, I mean, this is YouTube, the same, the very same YouTube that accused Eric Kidd of being anti-American. Yes. With its closed cap, its automated <laughs> closed captioning. He says, I'm Eric Kidd. And it said, anti-American. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are with this, uh, mm -hmm. this photograph of, of Eric and his, uh, his stunt double, I guess. Wow. That's fantastic. I don't know who the guy is, but that is so awesome. <laughs> nice find. <laughs> Thanks for that, Dominic. Also says, anyway, nice show, by the way. Hope Thank to you. catch your show live again soon. Best regards, Dominic. Cheers. <laughs> and last but not least, here is one from Franklin. Hey, Franklin. Says, just learned how to turn on a computer about two years ago. Hey. <laughs> Learning what I can on my own. Uh, with a little help from my friends. I just found you all last week. Bless you all. You are a godsend. Thank you so much. All the best. Cheers, Franklin. Franklin, cool. thank you. Cool. Yeah. Glad you found us. And now I got that song stuck in my head. Thank you for that. Which song? I have a little help from my friends. Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Got it. It's a singing night tonight, I guess. Yeah. Thanks, Franklin. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's interesting to me that still, you know, it is 1999, and there are still people who have never used computers mm -hmm. oh wait it's 2011 <gasps> how is that possible and yet here he is very cool um, and I'd love to know what what the experience is like this is this is what's interesting I think we're gonna have a generation that that's gonna be taking place where nobody has grown up without a computer just second age or just, yeah. yeah so the the whole um, the foreignness of well I have never used a computer up until two years ago it's just so incredibly foreign it's like well where what does that what is that like for you so jumping into it you would be new to linux but you'd also be new to windows right so what what is yeah, that i guess you'd see like everything you? with kind of fresh eyes yeah. there you'd have a real fair playing field anyways yeah like a lot of us them. a lot of us get you know the, the windows users get sick of windows and say okay i'm gonna look for an alternative be it mac or Linux, right? So you coming into it as as fresh, you're looking at the basically the three main options, or you know BSD mm -hmm. is as another option as well, um, and and say you know well what what is your driving, what's driving you to any one particular platform? I'd be interested to hear from you and and mm -hmm. get a little more information about what that's like for you, because that's that's really uh, interesting. So thanks for watching the show. I hope you get lots out of it. Hope that uh, you enjoy the community and uh, and learn a lot about your computer, how it works, and what you can do with it. Very cool. Cool. Well, oh, is that it for viewer that's testimonials? That's it for testimonials. Well, how can they send a viewer testimonial? Well, I'm glad you asked, Krista. <laughs> you sounded so much like me. I was confused. I thought I said something. But I like, and then I... Yeah. The viewers Sorry. didn't know the difference. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> batting my eyes and oh. twirling my curls that's what, that's what I do on air 
Yeah, that's it. <laughs> to a T. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, go to our website, cat, uh, category5.tv, click on Interact, and uh, you'll see viewer testimonials. Submit your own, and uh, you're going to want to do that this week. Hint, hint. We love to hear from you. We love to hear what you think of the show, uh, what we're doing right, what we're helping you with. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. That's what the viewer testimonial section is for. And uh, I'd encourage you to do that. Cheers. Thanks, everybody, for submitting yours this week. All right. Well, we do have some questions. Are we going to jump into some questions? Yeah, please. Yeah. Excellent. Here is one here from Where ZVZ. Where's Vz? <laughs> Um, he says, I want an Xmas special where they wear Xmas hats. So Christmas hats. Oh. Christmas special. I'm sorry. That's just not going to happen. Mm, uh, Robbie oh, Claus. wait a minute. Welcome to the Christmas special where we wear Christmas hats. <laughs> Are these Christmas hats? I guess. I've been yeah. wearing these in Christopher. July. I know you have, but we just didn't have the heart to tell you that, you know, that's kind of weird. Hmm. Nobody tells me these things. They just point and laugh, and I, I just, you know, the, I think it's fine. The long underwear, you're also supposed to wear those under your pants. Oh. That's just the normal way. Just, I feel just sheepish. <laughs> <laughs> well, to uh, distract from that, <laughs> see what else we got. <laughs> oh, here's a question from John Zimmerman. Hey, John. Uh, it says, I liked your tutorial on how to mount an SMB share. But after I enter my super user password, I get a permissions error. See attached screenshot. Right. What I'm actually trying to do is mount an SMB share on computer from my Open Media Vault NAS uh, so I can see it via file sync program to make a 2T drive attached to terabytes. Is that what you're saying? Drive attached yeah, to my yeah. computer sync to a 2 terabyte drive on my NAS. NAS? NAS. Network attached storage. Ah. Okay. Thanks so, all, John. So what's the so the issue is is that he's unable to Oh, and there's a After he enter, enters his password, he gets a permissions error. Okay, I'm just I'm going to get your uh your email here, John, and uh and see what uh what's going on. Let's take a boo. Just grabbing the picture that uh that John has attached for us. There we go. Okay. Well, let's take a look at what's happening here. First of all, uh, great show, great show that you're watching there. That's that's cool. Uh, <laughs> okay, so CD tilde tilde is home. So that takes you to your John folder. Uh, make dir open media vault. Okay, cannot create directory open media vault. It already exists. Okay, so you've already made it once. LS open media vault. There's nothing in it, so it's fine. It's empty. You can mount to it. sudo mount, and then the share name main drive on the server which is open media vault and then you're mounting it to that open media vault share so that's good now see this it's asking you for a password so that tells me that you have authentication on that share which means you have to authenticate before you can access it so you're entering your password and then you're getting a mount error could not resolve address no address associated with host name oh okay so you okay so that's the host name but it looks like you've already solved that if you get that error, obviously Open Media Vault is not resolving on your DNS, so you need to change it to the IP address. You did that. Good job. It asks you for the password. And then you've got a different error. It says mount error, permission denied. So this time it is trying to connect. It is getting a connection to the server, and the server is saying, okay, what's the password now? Rather than this one, which is just asking you for your pseudo, pseudo password. Pardon me. That is not uh, for the share. That's just for the super user do. Okay, so here, that would mount if John was the user on your server. What's happening here is that you're logged into Linux as John. So when you try to mount like this, okay, 192.168.1.10, that's your server, the Open Media Vault. So that server is expecting you to authenticate as a specific user. And it's not John. John is not the username. So what you need to do is instead add the username for that user on that share, whatever it may be. So Open Media Vault should have some users. So we're going to just change up your command a little bit, okay? So sudo mount dash o for options, password, or not password, we're going to go username equals, and whatever your username is. So let's say it's uh, 
John's an ass, okay? And then, then we go, slash, slash, 192.168.1.10, slash main drive, okay? Open media vault. So that's really all that we need to add is dash O, username, John's NAS. So that, that would be whatever your username is on that server it needs to match because otherwise it's going to try authenticating you as your Unix Linux username, okay? Um, beyond that, now you can also add the password to that line. I'm not going to recommend you do that because anyone looking through your history is going to be able to see it, right? Here they're only going to be able to see your username, so that's, that's a good thing. But you can go password equals my pass, right? Just like that, there's no spaces or anything. If you do have spaces in your password, you may have to put quotes around it. I'm not sure exactly where you would put the quotes. I think it's probably going to be like that. So you may have to ex experiment if there are quotes or crazy characters if there are silly things that, you know, something like that will probably break it if you don't put it in quotes. So hopefully that will help you. Hopefully that will help you to authenticate your mount point. Can you let us know if that, if that does it for you? But dash O and then username equals your username on the Linux, on the Windows machine should uh, should do it. Okay. Good luck. Let us know, please. Thank you. All right. We're like already half half through the hour. What's How does going that happen? On? Must be all How? the witty banter. All the witty banter. Mm -hmm. Time just flies when you're bantering wittily. That's what they say. That is what they say. Is mm -hmm. that what they say? <laughs> I assume. Do we have like a quick question? Well, Maybe the chat room has something for us, anything like that. We've got about uh, just a couple minutes until the news, and we've got uh, some exciting stuff coming up tonight. We're going to be giving away a pogo plug. Stick around and learning about tiling our uh, Linux. Um, I want to say Windows, but then that gets confusing. But <laughs> your applications, tiling them on your screen in Linux. So any questions in the chat room? We... Uh, love to hear from you. Scott Lewin saying, uh, when you're mounting, you can also use username at your IP. Um, so I guess, you, I guess you could. Slash, slash, and then S. Lewin at 192.168. I'm not sure if that would work or not, but dash O is for options, and that lets you do it when you're using a mount like that. We're to start and simple. I mean, you can also mount things automatically in your FS tab. You can create uh, encrypted password files so that you can mount it automatically at boot without the, the risk of exposing your password. Um, so there, there are different things that we can do, but let's get to the, let's get through the, the most basic, which is just to get that mount point uh, mounted and uh, get you up and running. Uh, Raptor222 wondering if, uh, if we can stream the show uh, live without using Flash, and unfortunately that is not an available option uh, based on our streaming partners at this time. Uh, hopefully one day. Uh, but unfortunately, that's not currently an option. We use Ustream and Justin.tv. Uh, bandwidth restricts us to being able to stream only, uh, you know, a couple of streams at this quality. So, uh, so we have both Ustream and Justin.tv. Hopefully, one day we'll be able to get more bandwidth, uh, bandwidth, and we'll be able to uh, upstream to a, a third-party provider as well. Cool. Definitely, you can watch without Flash if you're using like the RSS feeds, not live. But that's a little different because it's not live, right? Uh, RSS feeds will download any format file you want, like an M4V for the, uh, for the HD files, MP4, um, even MP3 if you want to just listen and not have to look at this. But why wouldn't you want to? Because I make faces. I make faces. Thanks, Sammy Says. <laughs> uh, the mobile site uses Flash through, uh, well, it uses H.264. Uh, it will use Flash depending on your, your browser, uh, but if you're using an iPhone, it will use H.264 with a specific codec uh, for the audio. Uh, I believe it's AAC, so it's compatible with the iPhone, but that's not something that we provide. That's something that Ustream provides, so we don't have a workaround to get into that or anything like that. Cool. Thanks for the question, uh, Raptor222. Well, should you uh, hit the news, I suppose? And oh, well. Talk about all if the I can, If I can find it, we can do the news. Just yeah. us. It's the tab oh, that this says one. News. Newsroom. There you go. 
<laughs> it's the one that says news. Yeah. Take it away, Krista. Found it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There it is. All right. So after many complications, uh, here's some top stories from the Category 5.TV newsroom. Beginning in January, Internet Explorer users will be automatically updated to the latest version of the browser. Microsoft said it was starting the project to update millions of machines to improve security online. Future updates to the browser would be applied without a user's knowledge to help beat scammers catching people out with fake updates. Microsoft says that those who do not want their browser updated can opt out or alternatively uninstall the software. Hmm. Good recommendation. I think maybe. Hmm. Hint, hint. Efforts to create self-cleaning cotton fabrics are bearing fruit in China. Engineers have created a chemical coating that causes cotton materials to clean themselves of stains and remove odors while exposed to sunlight. The researchers say the treatment is cheap, non-toxic, and ecologically friendly. The team's breakthrough was to create a nanoparticle alcohol-based compound made up of a, made up of titanium dioxide dioxide sorry and nitrogen. To test the effectiveness of their invention, the engineers marked the fabrics with an orange dye stain and exposed them to the sun. After two hours in the light, the team said 71% of stains had been removed, a dramatic improvement over previously trialed trailed trialed sorry techniques. It's very cool. The so interesting I, thing that I think there is that they know specifically that it's 71%. Not 70, not 72. Interesting. 71. Interesting. I also think that's great because it'll get anyone who is, you know, those people that don't like go out much, right. all have to go do the laundry, go get sunlight. It's good for you too. Go get some vitamin D, people. And good clean for your clothes both your clothes and, you and you. Hmm. But what if you perspire heavily in the sun? Thereby well, then, continually staining your shirt. But as, then it'll be continually cleaning. But where does it end? Well, maybe you just have to gradually like sneak over into the shade. You know? Yeah. I don't mm. know. We'll ask the scientists. Yeah, we'll, I'm we'll just talk a to them designer. We'll talking to them later this week. <laughs> I'll, I'll ask Good. them that. <laughs> what if you sweat profusely? <laughs> <laughs> Only Robbie. No. <laughs> yeah. No. Oh, continuing on, a field trial of LED light fittings in social housing says that the new technology can deliver huge energy savings, reduce costs, and makes residents feel safer. The study, carried out by the Energy Saving Trust, EST, measured the performance of more than 4,250 LED light fittings installed at 35 sites. The EST said it carried out the trial because an increasing number of LED lights were now commercially available. I, it is, I'm not done. I'm, I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> I just wanted to say something, but oh, I'll well, wait. Well, I one line, Robbie. Just count to five, I'll be done. One. It is predicted the technology could dominate the lighting market Two. by 2015. Robbie, 2015. do you have something to say? Well, I was just going to say, I actually bought an LED light. And this, just this one. is interesting. Just yeah, one. I bought, no, I bought two, didn't I? Did it come in a pack You're of right. two? No, it came in a pack of one. And oh, so he bought... And absurdly expensive. <laughs> But I thought, okay, well, here's a great way, you know, and we try to be earth-friendly and we try mm-hmm. to conserve power, but also generate less heat and, and have something that's long-lasting so you're not constantly having to replace it. So I bought one for my daughter's lamp, which works great, mm-hmm. and I bought one for the, for the above the stove. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. It's like, it puts out the it's light It's like sunlight. Of, well, it, it says it puts out like 40 watts of power, but it uses three watts. Mm-hmm. So I put it in and, and was all, you know, pretty, pretty gung-ho about this whole LED thing. And it puts out the power of about three watts. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's sad. <laughs> so, you know, I've got... I, so I didn't end up using it. I went back oh. to incandescent. No, I went with a fluorescent, one of the new ones that has the glass over top of the fluorescent tube. Hmm. So, but they were well, really dim. But, you know, we just got our Christmas lights and they're actually LED. Yeah. And it says that the whole string is like 14 watts or something. And, mm-hmm. and you know, the great thing is that it says that you can't go over like 48,000 watts or something when stringing them together. So, so, so you can string a few together. Yeah. Clark Griswold, yeah, so that's great. eat your heart out. <laughs> but what is kind of... Like, but they're really are bright. They are that's really bright. That's a good bright. practical use. But could you imagine like lighting up a building like that? Well, just maybe just get a lot of Christmas lights. A lot of Christmas lights. You could, yeah. What's your experience with these like eco-friendly <laughs> bulbs? I'd love to know. Like, I haven't found one yet that is overly impressive as far as the luminescence goes. It, it always hmm. seems to to let down. And the fluorescent ones, they they turn kind of yellow. Yes. Which is gross. Mm-hmm. I don't like yellow light. It's like 
So. Mm-hmm. Especially if it's like in the bathroom and in the morning you're looking at yourself like, oh, oh I look, I look so, sickly today. Oh, yeah. Jaundice. <laughs> Came Somebody overnight. called the doctor. Yeah, just like that. <laughs> what did I eat? Mm-hmm. I mean, come on. It was chicken soup. Here I am. <laughs> anyway, you got more news, don't you? I, I, I do, actually. And somebody yeah. interrupted me and we got carried away. But back never, to Russia. Never get carried away. Oh. Mm-hmm. Russia's space agency. Ooh, Roscosmos. <laughs> Uh, oh, Cosmos, Ros- Cos- could Cosmos. Be, it could be Cosmos. <laughs> it could be Cosmos when I see a word like well, Cosmos. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> In relation to their space program. I didn't pre read the news, okay? <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're, you don't say. No. I'd never give you a hard time. Maybe it's it. the fancier way of saying things, you know, like tomato, <laughs> tomato. You say Ross Cosmos. I you say, say tomato. And I say tomato. <laughs> So, that particular Dude. agency I was just speaking of says yes. it's unsuccessful. Mars probe will fall back to Earth next month. The unmanned Phobos, oh, Pho- Phobos Grunt spacecraft became stranded in orbit in November. The agency mm. says it expects a toxic fuel on board to bur- burn up on re-entry, but 2030, 2230 fragments of the spacecraft will survive to the surface. Oh, you had to put the name in again. Ross, I'm going to say it wrong. Ross Cosmos? That's my guess. Okay. It says it expects only about 200 kilograms to make it all the way through. Phobos Grunt was built to land on the larger of Mars's two moons, Phobos, to scoop up rock and bring it back to Earth. Current estimates for the timing of the fall are between the 6th and 19th of January, but this window will be narrowed near 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 oh, nearer the the event. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And, oh, oh, the news is done. Okay, so get the full stories at category5.tv slash newsroom. The category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions by our community of viewers. If you have any news stories that you think are worthy of on your mention, email us at newsroom at category5.tv. For the category5.tv newsroom, I'm Krista Wells. <laughs> I could have thrown anyone's name in there. It would have done. Been, done. <laughs> Made it through. Hey, thanks, Krista. <laughs> I know. I, I saw the tapping halfway through. He was like, "When is this going to end?" <laughs> mm-hmm. Sure, sure. Yeah. Tonight's news is brought to you by GardengatePharms.com, certified organic broccoli sprout and wheatgrass juice. This stuff keeps my immunity up. I haven't been sick in a long, long time. Very cool stuff. It's also laughter. It is good. It's lots stuff. of laughter that has been keeping you healthy. That also helps. Mm-hmm. GardengatePharms.com, though, check it out, and uh, their product is fantastic. Also, uh, cat5.tv slash Calypso. It's a free online, online, massive multiplayer online game, and you can download the free program from cat5.tv slash Calypso, and hopefully uh, Jot and I will see you in-game. And also the Pogo Plug, which you can win tonight, cat5.tv slash Pogo Plug. This device allows you to access your data from anywhere in the world, as long as you've got a high-speed internet connection. You can access it from your mobile device, from your computers. Uh, you can share with family and friends. Check it out, cat5.tv slash Pogo Plug to get your free 5 gigabyte personal cloud. This is Category 5 Technology TV, and I'm your host, Robbie Ferguson. Great to see you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You guys want to learn how to tile stuff? Oh, do they ever. Do they? It's like, cool. You know, someone mentioned earlier that you, you they were wondering if you would show them how to tile bathrooms as well. I uh, am not too so experienced be a at that. Technology TV slash home reno show. There you go. But for I now, we're just I don't know what you I know, would have tiling to give. via Linux. Is it? This is how a Category Five TV home reno would go. The renovations guy, whatever I don't even know what they're called. The contractor <laughs> Renova- would be doing the guys all the with work. Hammers. <laughs> and I'm standing there with my mobile device, mm-hmm. taking pictures Facebook. going on. Oh yeah, on taking Twitter. pictures and tweeting them. <laughs> <laughs> Posting them on my Twitter channel. Watching the contractors. Channel. You can follow me. It's <laughs> at Robbie Ferguson if you want to see. That's that's literally how mm. it would go down. Greg in Texas says it's a pain to tile a bathroom. And I believe you. Mm. Interesting. Interesting stuff. Okay. Here's my problem. Okay. I've got a bit. Go. No, well, here's, here's the thing, okay? I use a computer all the time. And that 
can result in medical issues and, and problems like that. I've str struggled with arm pain with ulnar nerve entrapment. It's like the opposite of carpal tunnel syndrome. So the, the part of my arm goes to sleep. Not good because I need that to click the mouse and to type. Two fingers that I really need mm. when I'm typing and they stop, stop working. So drink more coffee. I need to drink more coffee, I think. 16 <laughs> pots a day is not enough. Um, so that, that's a problem. But also what has been happening recently, I don't know if you, if you do follow me on Twitter, you know, uh, but I've actually, uh, I have a spinal problem from, largely from sitting at a computer like this, right? So this is result in years hunch. of doing this. The mm -hmm. computer hunch. And in years of doing this, it's actually resulted in a, in a, a, a problem that, uh, that is, you know, we're trying to fix. So one of the things that I've had to do is, is look at my desk at work and say, okay, well, what can I do differently? What can I do to make this more ergonomic? And I've got the split keyboard, and I'm using a trackball, and I'm doing everything that I know to do. I've got a nice chair that they've purchased for me that's meant to be more ergonomic and, and things like that. But I do have two monitors, and, and one of the problems that I have is that my one monitor is right in front of me. That's good. And I always thought that was good, right? But the other monitor is off to the side because it has to be. That's just the way it works when you've got two monitors. So I'm constantly craning my neck like this and looking over here because this is where all of my, uh, my graphic development happens, and over here is where I do all my programming. So I'm back and forth between these two monitors constantly. I'm never looking left. Mm -hmm. I'm always looking right, and that's also resulted in one of my, my discs in my, in my upper spine is actually to the side, which is a problem because it's pinching on a nerve. So all that to say, I'm looking for ways to get rid of that secondary monitor mm -hmm. and be able to look straight at my computer screen and sit with good posture because that's what we really need to do. Um, so one of the ways that I have been approaching that is to say, okay, well, how can I get all of my stuff over to this one monitor in such a way that it's still practical? Uh, and we're going to be, over the course of several weeks, we're going to be looking at things like that. Uh, I even have a hands-free mouse that we're going to be looking at that uses your uh, head gestures, where it, it's actually going to move your mouse where you're looking. We're going to be looking at that as well uh, over the next couple of weeks. Um, so there's lots of cool stuff that we're going to be looking at with regards to ergonomics and avoiding repetitive stress injury. Uh, but what we want to look at tonight is something that is good to know and good to be able to do on your computer because it is, it's, it helps to organize your screen in such a way that you can uh, have more than one application running with it without having to switch back and forth and back and forth. What's interesting these days is we've got such big screens on our desk mm -hmm. that you've got a lot more real estate. Back in the early days when we had like 13, 14 inch screens, it was Word. Mm -hmm. My Word processor document was there. If I was lucky, I had a wide screen and then Excel was like super, right? Wow. But it, you'd always just, it would just be one application up on your screen. And yet, us old school folk, we tend to still do that. We tend to maximize our windows, and really it's not necessary because we have so much screen real estate. Screens are bigger. Screens have got a lot more space on them. So tonight what I want to show you is how to further utilize that space by tiling your windows in such a way that they are in a grid pattern, okay? So what we're going to do is, uh, first of all, we're going to get into our terminal. This is uh, for Linux. I'm using Zorin OS. This is based. Uh, this version of it is based on uh, Ubuntu, which is based on Debian. So this pretty much will work with any uh, Linux distribution, no problem. sudo apt-get update is the first thing we want to type. That's going to get our latest repository information. Make sure you enter your super user password. There we go. Okay. First thing I want to do is I want to actually make sure that I have the latest version of Python the libraries for it, because the script that we're going to be using is, in fact, uh, going to run using Python. Okay. So what we're going to do, sudo apt-get install python-xlib. All right. Hit enter on that. Mine says python-xlib is already the newest version. So Zorin OS has come with that. That's fantastic. Your system may or may not have come with that, so it doesn't hurt anything to, to type the command anyways, and, and that's a very quick way to know that, hey, it's already installed, it's already the newest version, we're good to go. So I'm done with that. I can close that. I'll bring up the terminal again a little bit later. I'm going to bring up my browser, and again, links will be in the show notes for episode number 222, but where we want to go is to cat5.tv slash tile. 
Okay, I just made that real simple for you. T-I-L-E, just so that it takes you there. Because this is going to take you to a big, long URL. Watch what happens. Do, 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 do. It takes us to SourceForge. Okay, it's going to automatically start downloading your file. If this file ever becomes dead, I'll redirect that, uh, that hot link. Here we go. It's downloading and done. Okay, so this has given us a program called PyTile. P-Y-T-Y-L-E. What I'm going to do is grab that folder. I'm looking at this in File Roller, which is uh, the application that uh, is used to decompress files in uh, many dif different Linux distributions. I'm going to right-click on the folder and go Extract. And I'm just going to put that in my home folder. Uh, I'll create a folder called uh, Programs, or whatever you want to call it. It doesn't need to be done. Um, and we just basically want to extract the files that are in there. So that's done. It's a very small program. Show the files. It looks like this. Okay? You can read this install file if you like. Open it with, uh, with gedit. Go through the uh, very, very simple instructions. Of course, you can also just follow along with us tonight. Really, really easy that way, just to follow along on your screen. So I'm going to close out everything there. I've already downloaded and extracted it. I'm going to go back into my terminal. Okay, I'm going to go into wherever I put that file. So I went into, I made a folder called Programs, and there's a, fo a folder in there called PyTile-075, which was created automatically by the extraction. Okay, If you do an ls, you'll see the files that are there. There is a setup.py. You can't run that just as it is. What you want to do is you want to go Python setup.py install. Okay, If I do that, I'm just realizing that's going to give me an error. See what happened? Could not, blah, 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 can't do, fail. So what we need to do is we need to be super user because this needs to install some user local stuff. sudo python setup.py install. Run that. Done and done. Okay, that's as easy as it was. Now what we want to do is just type in pytile, like that. And an ampersand is usually recommended on that kind of thing because then it's going to return you back to your terminal so you can still type other stuff. And I hit enter. And nothing happens. Because that's what it does. How fantastic. So let's bring up a screen where I've got lots of stuff running. Now notice I'm just leaving that terminal running because I just want to see what it works like. Here is a screen on my computer where I've got the chat room. I've got the viewer photos that we were looking at. I don't know, let's bring up a, uh, a copy of our website as well. Remember, I've already run PyTile, okay? So it's running right now. If I hit the Alt-A key on my keyboard, Alt and the letter A, watch what happens. There we go. So now I've got my Category 5 website mm -hmm. on the left here. I've got my chat room, and I've got viewer photos. See that? Here's what's cool. I'm going to launch another window. Let's go Accessories. Uh, well, let's just bring up anything, right? Let's bring up uh, an office window. LibreOffice Writer. Watch what happens. I'm not going to touch anything. <laughs> Hands off. There we go. Okay, It's automatically made space for it. Ooh. Move things around. Ooh, she says. Okay, I've got, I've got a small screen. I'm at 1024 by 768. You've got a bigger screen, guaranteed. Um, so... That's, that's cool. You're going to have more space than me. Now, what happens if, well, hey, I, wanna, I actually want to put this over here. Well, why doesn't that work? Notice what's cool about PyTile is that you still have control over your applications. I can still maximize stuff. It doesn't lock you down to the grid. It just utilizes a grid. So now we're talking about, hey, I want to put this one over here. I don't want the website to be the big one. So I'm going to hit Alt-C for cycle. And look what happens. Okay. And it actually cycles the big space. I'm going to hit Alt-A again to retile everything. Alt-C, cycle, 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 Alt-C, right? So I can go between different windows. So in my case, I could have my gedit running, which I use for all my programming in PHP. Uh, Zorin calls it text editor. So here I can be programming away. Right? with the website over here, and I can refresh to see my changes, for example. I can hit Alt-C, and it's going to cycle again. Now my website is down here, and here's my programming if I want that to be a large one. If I give up on it, I don't want to be in this mode anymore, in the tiled mode. I hit Alt, 
U for untile, and now I am once again in just a free-for-all window mode where I can just move my windows around however I like. That's pretty cool. Yeah. There's actually a couple questions uh, regarding this in the chat room. Sure. Um, Jot says, uh, what if an application already uses all day or alt-c hotkeys? That's a good question, actually. That is a very good question. Um, can you think of one that, uh, that that's the case for? Because I'd love to test that <laughs> theory. But I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually look into the programs folder, and we're going to look at the configuration and see if we can change those, uh, that, uh, that, what, what hotkeys we're using, basically doesn't know of any on, offhand, and not, neither do I, but I uh, guarantee you we'll be able to change. But I've never thought of that, John. That's a very good point. Thank you. Put me on the spot. Pie time. <laughs> I'll test your knowledge. Yeah. Well, that's good. Let's see. Any other, you said there were some other questions, There's too. There's another I'll, one in there. Yeah? Okay. Uh, you want me to shoot right now, or you want to yeah, concentrate? That way uh, it's not, because I'm looking here, but... Uh, Oh, Greg in Texas says, does it work hey, with, uh, is it compis, compis, multiple workspaces? Does that answer your question? I believe it does. Yeah, compis is what, hmm. what allows you to have those effects. So, yes, it does. That was much easier than Jot's question. I uh, guess it was. Looking into this one for you, John. I don't know. That's a stump. That one stumped me. Everybody find a program that will do all day. Everyone's probably opening all their programs yeah. right now. They're like, all day, all day, all day. Yes. Makes sense. <laughs> I've never seen you work so hard. Well, you know, I got to get the answer for these people. <laughs> and Josh's probably like, "Ha ha!" I stumped him. He doesn't even care about. <laughs> it's like your pro your other program can you can probably change it real easy, okay? Mm -hmm. So just mm -hmm. stop. Okay, key binding. There is a file called PyTile uh, tile dash default. Okay, let's see. There's oh, there's an RC file. There are ways. I don't know the answer for you, Jot. But what I'll do is I'll post you a link to a forum where this particular person has listed. Um, some help for us. See the key bindings? Alt A, Alt U, and you can change those, okay? So you could change that to whatever you want. But I'll, uh, what I'll do is I'll post a link to that because I, I've never changed the hotkeys. I don't have any other applications that use Alt A or Alt U. I pretty much use Alt E and Alt F in, in every application. That's it. So good question. Cool. Well, thanks everybody. That was great. I hope you learned something today. And in the meantime, <laughs> I told you that there would be a special guest on the show. We have a very special... Yeah, it's not me, because I'm not that special. Well, you're special. You're special. <laughs> special. Special. <laughs> you're so special. Jot, mm. it is so good to see you. Jot is joining us tonight, and uh, Jot, I will, uh, I will let you take it away. Hi, I'm Jot. You know me from... The chat room, of course, and then clip show, and of course, one thing try Jot wins the polo plug. Jot! It's Jot! Congratulations once again to Jot! The winner of Flick Race tonight, Jot! I know that some of you may think that I win too much, and for you, I can say good news, everyone, because, well, where is it? Hmm. Hmm. Well, we sold power tester. I can't do anything with that. And oh, hey, look, it's the cables he was looking for, for these hard drives. Well, they are mine now. But ah, here's my mouse. Look, this is my mouse. As you can see, the light is on, but it's not working anymore. You can win that pogo card. Don't forget to compete and do what Robbie says because you want to win another one of those nice polo plugs. Of course, this one is an old one, but then I want a new one, so don't worry about that. But um, all three days apart, Merry Christmas, Happy Birthday to Yacht, 
and happy new year. Bye. And good luck, of course. <laughs> I love that. I love it. <laughs> Jot, thank you so much for sending that in to us. And as Jot said, you've got a chance to win a pogo plug tonight. Do not miss out. Mm-hmm. Jot commands that uh, you, you do as I say. <laughs> Robbie says. <laughs> this, this week, what we're going to do is uh, anybody who has posted a viewer testimonial within the last four weeks uh, and anyone who posts a viewer testimonial this week, uh, get onto our website, category5.tv, slash, uh, or just category5.tv, go to interact and uh, viewer testimonials, submit your own. What, we, uh, what we're encouraging you to do is tell us a little bit about what you love about the show, say hi to the team here, and we will read your testimonial out on the air. Uh, but also, we're going to be taking all those names, we're going to be putting you into a draw, and next week on the show, uh, for episode number 223, which will be going forth live, uh, we will be here, uh, actually Hillary will be here with me uh, to give that away. So we're going to be drawing your name. And again, if you have submitted a viewer testimonial in the past month, uh, you don't need to resubmit. We will include you in that, uh, in that draw as well. Cool. So I wanted to give everybody a chance to win because we do click race. And I love click race. It's a lot of fun. And we do these online uh, ways of winning. But one, mm-hmm. there are a lot of you who aren't able to watch live tonight. And I understand that. We broadcast to the world. And we have uh, viewers who it's just an unreasonable time for you to be watching live. So I wanted you to have a chance. I also wanted you to have a chance. If you have a slower internet connection, you're unable to really get into click race and, and get any kind of performance that competes with people like Jot, who have uh, a very high speed internet connection. So uh, just to keep it fair for you, here's your opportunity to win a pogo plug uh, just before the, uh, the year is through. So cool. That really, uh, that takes us right to the end of the show. Is it? Is that? the time already one, well there's one more thing that i promised well i was talking to gwg today hmm. and you know we we're wishing everybody a merry christmas and and uh gwg said well what about hanukkah or is it is it, is it hanukkah or chanaka or kanaka i think it's, Han- I think it's it, hanukkah a lot of the, people uh, the, here say is it hanukkah like hanukkah is that right I'd s- i don't know but he has uh, he said you know what you got to go see if you can find some sufganio if i hmm. say that right sufganio is that right did i say it right sufganio so what now while i can't find the traditional treat what i do have for you tonight hmm. y- you go ahead and just get right in oh there. my goodness well this is as close <laughs> as i could get gwg this is gadget wisdom guru from android buffet can you see that? Oh, that's that's as close as we could get. <laughs> We're gonna get powder everywhere. That's <laughs> right. I, I don't even. I'm just trying. We're gonna get powder all. Oh, well. It's delicious. Mhm. So happy Hanukkah or Hanukkah. I, I don't. I don't happy. know how to say it. GWG. <laughs> happy everything, but Merry Christmas. Mhm. Hope everybody has a safe and happy holiday, and and uh, wishing you the best for. 2012. Uh, I will be here for our um, kind of New Year uh, special next week. But I uh, hope you have a great weekend and a fantastic week. Mm. Yeah, it's like a donut. Yeah, fajita would be good. Sammy yeah. says, says. Would that be. Is that like a, a Hanukkah fajita? Han- a Hanukkah fajita. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Becca was laughing. She says, you're wearing a black shirt tonight. Oh, what will happen if you like, dropped it or something and like icing sugar everywhere? <laughs> well, everybody in the chat room, nice to see you. Craig in Texas. Mm-hmm. Maxwell6307, who uh, was able to join us again live tonight. Sammy says, T-Money. Raptor222, it's great to see you again. Uh, Trekkie, double O. Always nice to see another Trekkie. <laughs> Of Am course. I missing anyone? Scott Lewin, who's joining us from Barrie. Nice to see you. And of course, Jot. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks, everybody. Fun night. It was a fun night. Yeah, hi, Michael. Jawar. Who else have we got? Scorpio55, nice to see you. Sprint Cowboy. Troy74, haven't seen you in a while. Uh, Tordo. Good to see you. So what's uh, what's your big plans in general go, in yeah, life? Because your family's or... kind of, no, you, it's Christmas, <laughs> right? So you got. Um, I won't or? be seeing my parents or my no. sister um, this Christmas. Is that a um, first or? 
Uh, in a bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah so usually I go out there. This year, actually, I'm going up to Brad's parents' place. Oh, cool. But in February... I will be on the beaches of Mexico with Darn. my family for our late Christmas. So That's nice. I wow. will suck it up for now, you know. <laughs> That's how they make it up to you. Well, we won't see you at Christmas, but we will take you to Mexico. We'll see you in Mexico. Mexico. Yeah. And right. I said, well, I guess that's, uh, yeah, it'll that's suffice. <laughs> mm-hmm. And you, are you in Barrie? Yeah, we're kind of around and spending time with our kids. We've got the three kids, and uh, what's going to be really neat this year is Liam is is a year old, so he's, he's walking. Do he's I walking, see? He's walking. He's tearing <laughs> into stuff, and and it's been I know just a lot of fun for Becca with putting ornaments back on the tree and stuff. But uh, it'll be a lot of fun this year because he's old enough to kind of mm-hmm. enjoy tearing at the gifts oh, and, that's good. and stuff like that. It's so exciting. We're looking forward to it. I love just the family time, and mm-hmm. it's uh, it's very special that way. So, well. Everybody, uh, have a Merry Christmas. Have a great week. Mm-hmm. And uh, I will talk to you next uh, next Tuesday. And, uh, yeah. We'll well, see you later. Thanks for joining guys. us tonight. Bye-bye. Thanks, GWG. <laughs> a lot of good comments now, though. That was so messy. I'm serious. <laughs> it's like oozing down my cheeks. Mm-hmm. It was so good. <laughs>